Hello. So welcome back to track two. Uh, the following talk is was gonna is gonna be in English. We're gonna welcome Michelle. She's originally from the U.S., uh, but she now lives in Lisbon. She's a specialist in digital marketing, uh, specialized in travel content or travel-related re content. And today she will talk about how using social media for website, uh, how you can use social media for website SEO. Thank you, Michelle. Yay. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much for having me. Um, my goal here today is to broaden how you think about social media for your website or your business and to provide some inspiration for how you might use social media to amplify your website SEO. So social media is a great way to communicate directly with your audience, to your target market, and to help build brand trust. I hope you were able to catch um, Cheryl's talk on social media earlier this morning because she made a great case for the importance of social media for business. But a downfall of some social media is that the value can be lost in the rotation of the algorithm. So today I want to talk about thinking about a different way to think about your social media presence, your business's social media presence, and how using social media platforms as a marketing branch for your business can provide long-term value outside of pushing direct sales or traffic. So first I want to give you a little bit of understanding about me. I am originally from the United States. I grew up on the West Coast and moved around a lot. Most recently I lived in Austin, Texas. And two years ago, I moved with my husband here to Lisbon, Portugal. He's sitting right there. Everyone say hi, Dan. <laughs> um, I come from a background in corporate digital marketing, working on websites and applications for companies like Whole Foods Market, Target, and Coca-Cola. And now my husband and I work together on our travel business, Honeymoon Always. So Honeymoon Always is a website that focuses on honeymoons, luxury destinations, and couples travel. We monetize through ads, affiliate links, and marketing partnerships. So for us, getting traffic to our website through organic search via search engine optimization is the name of the game. My husband's background is also in digital marketing, so he focuses on the web website and content strategy. And we wanted to see how we could use my digital skills to support the website in new ways. So I started focusing more on our social media and content creation with the goal of strengthening and amplifying our brand on new platforms. We already had an Instagram account, that's this guy here, so the first thing we did was shift our Instagram strategy. It used to feature generic travel content, and then we shifted to focus on featuring us and our travels to help amplify brand trust and to open up opportunities for future paths of business. We started a YouTube channel, and then later we started a TikTok account, which frankly I knew the least about, so there was a big learning curve there. So I want to talk a little bit about our content strategy shift because it will inform some of what I tell you later. Um, so specifically our YouTube content strategy shift. So for our first year on YouTube, we really grew our channel mostly talking about our experience moving here to Portugal. And I actually, two people in the audience today have already like said hi because they watched our videos about us moving to Portugal, which is amazing. Um, this was the main thing consuming our energy at the time, and also other people's YouTube content had been really helpful to us, so we wanted to contribute to that as well. And you can see that our top videos are about our move to Portugal. Um, it was really great for community building. It really helped me get in the practice of putting out content even when it wasn't perfect. And I really got to learning how to edit and produce better video, and obviously it helped to build our channel following. But after about a year, we started real realizing it was time to shift focus. A lot of really great things came out of growing our YouTube channel with content about moving to Portugal, but it wasn't matching our overall business goals of helping people plan honeymoons and romantic travel. So we took a risk and decided to launch a completely new project, specifically for our YouTube channel, which we called the Ultimate Caribbean Honeymoon Tour. This project would follow us visiting 10 plus Caribbean islands, 20 resorts, and sharing our findings on YouTube to help people plan their next great resort vacation. So when we started this Caribbean project, we had a foundation of content and brand recognition outside of our website on these different social media platforms, which was important. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you about <laughs> when we went viral. So uh, last September, like seven months ago, we embarked on the first leg of our Caribbean honeymoon tour starting in Jamaica. And our first week there, we went on a romantic excursion that included horseback riding, in the water and zip lining and hiking up a waterfall. Very romantic excursion. 
um, all of which we were documenting for inclusion on our website and on our social media channels. When we went horseback riding, we learned that when horses get really deep in the water, um, they relax a lot, and I will <laughs> show you what happened next. Okay, is it? I can't see it up here, so. It definitely played. It'll be fun, they said. It'll be romantic, they said. It's so gross. Okay. It'll be fun, oh, no. they said. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> sorry that video is kind of gross, but if you couldn't tell what was happening, all of the horses pooped and we all waded right into it. Um, the tour guides made us stay in line and keep our legs in the water. They were yelling at us that we couldn't move out of the way. The water was up to our waists. So this video captures about the third time in this short horseback ride experience that we waded right into horse poop, which explains the noise that I was making in that video. Um, so I posted this video to TikTok and Instagram where they currently have a collective 31 million views. So what do you do with a viral video? Uh, so while we were waiting through the funny comments and the internet trolls, we learned that there are news organizations that scour the internet for viral videos, and they write articles about them. So soon we learned that our video was featured on websites like MSN and Yahoo and Newsweek. For each news publication that was displaying our video, we reached out to the authors of each news article and asked that they insert a link to our website as a condition of playing our video which they all agreed to do. This is what's known as a backlink. So a little bit of an explainer on backlinks. A backlink is when one website links to another, and getting backlinks improves your website rankings in search engines because it's basically telling the search engines, hey, this website has authority and value. So the more quality backlinks your website has, the higher your website can rank in search terms for Google. It's particularly valuable to get really big quality websites to link to your website, and because of our social media video going viral and being featured in the news, we were able to gain backlinks from websites with very high authority. So what does this do for us? This increases Google's perception of our website's authority, so our articles are more likely to show up higher than our competitors in organic search. Obviously, this is how we make money. Showing up higher in search rankings than our competitors means more money. And this is long-term value for our website, which will last much longer than our 15 minutes of fame on the internet. So some takeaways from this. Going viral on social media sounds great, but it doesn't always translate to long-term business success or money. So if you do happen to go viral, turning it into PR and backlinks is ideal. And one note is that even though our video has more views on Instagram, and we have a bigger community on Instagram, all of our news coverage came from TikTok. So if you're not on TikTok yet, I'd recommend it. All right, so <laughs> we can't all plan to go viral because if we could, we'd all do it, and then we'd realize that the internet is a scary place and we'd all hide. So the next thing I want to share with you is how you can use video content on social media to improve your website rankings regardless of how many views it gets on its native platforms. So I talked a little bit about our YouTube channel before. As part of our Ultimate Caribbean Honeymoon Tour on YouTube, we started making individual YouTube about specific resorts. This was a shift from our high-performing content about Portugal, but here are some reasons why I think this was the right move. This is establishing ourselves as trusted honeymoon travel experts on a platform other than our own website. YouTube is the second biggest search engine after Google. YouTube allows us to link in the description so we can link to our website and convert traffic that way. And YouTube videos last much longer in the algorithm than other media social media platforms. Now, here is what I actually think is the most surprising and important takeaway here, is that we have seen that by embedding our YouTube videos on correlating articles on our website, our Google rankings for that blog article have improved. So here's an example of one of our videos where we talked about one specific resort we went to in an article about our resort. And whoop, 
here is <laughs> a mysterious Google Analytics view for this article, so we chopped off most of the numbers, but what you're looking at here is the orange line is the time frame from before we embedded the YouTube video in the article, and the blue, blue line is the time frame after. So you can see that traffic to this article immediately increased after embedding a YouTube video in our article. Here's another example, and this is not an exact science. It didn't happen to us every single time, but overall we have seen an increase in organic search traffic to articles where we have embedded a related YouTube video. And now we have a presence in both Google search and YouTube search, and we're showing up higher in Google search. We've seen a direct correlation and increase in to traffic on our website after this YouTube project, which means greater earnings for us. So, some thoughts on which social media platforms you should use. This obviously depends on your business goals and what you're trying to do for your business, but here's how we think about the different platforms. YouTube. So YouTube is great for search, increasing brand awareness, and improving website authority when your video is embedded. It has the biggest long-term payoff because it is basically a search engine, and so it will last for years and years and years. It takes the most time to create quality content for this platform, and it has the biggest learning curve, so there is definitely some painful trial and error there. Um, my recommendation is if you're just getting into YouTube content, take time learning YouTube SEO, thumbnail optimization, because that's how people are gonna choose to click on your video over someone else's, and make sure that you're providing real value, not just pretty footage. TikTok is where the fastest growth is and the biggest opportunity to go viral, in my opinion. This is where news sites are crawling for content, which can lead to quality backlinks, and linking customers to an external site is clunkier on this platform. They obviously want you to stay on this platform as much as possible. So we are careful about what we post here versus YouTube. Like we don't give all of our details and information away on TikTok where we otherwise would on YouTube because the payoff for us from a business perspective is higher on YouTube. Um, the best way to get better on TikTok is practice and to be a user of the platform because TikTok has a language of its own to understand. And if you don't understand kind of the language and the lingo, it can be really hard to kind of get running. So this is another trial and error situation. And Instagram and Facebook are both good for marketing, branding, and fostering community and authority. Most content is not long lasting. So whenever we have a business partner who wants to work with us for something and they say, hey, we want three Instagram stories and an Instagram post, we think, no, you don't. Because this is gonna be a flash in the pan moment for you. And we know that our value is where the content is gonna last longer. So we oftentimes will move partnerships to other platforms. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some people have success converting traffic manually through these platforms, but we haven't done that personally. Some final thoughts. The best thing that you can do is to get started. Did I? Yeah, okay, great. Um, the best thing you can do is to get started. Try it out, put yourself out there. If you're not putting your signal out there, no one can find you. Um, as you learn, you may change and pivot, and that's okay. Our biggest numbers on YouTube, the biggest vanity numbers, came from our Portugal content, but that wasn't serving us from a business perspective. And we have found that shifting content, even though it was risky on the platform, ended up being a really good opportunity for us. So if you do end up needing to grow and change your direction, it's all a learning opportunity, and that's the best you can do. Ultimately, social media can be a great tool for business. Any questions? Thank you, Michelle. We have time, we have plenty of time, I think, for yeah, I uh, <laughs> questions. Um, hey, yeah, I'm just wondering, oh, this is so close. I'm just wondering what other strategies you implement beside uh, social media to kind of like increase your um, organic um, ranking and which one of them is like worked out for the most for you and which one you think you need to change, um, especially now with like AI and all that sort of stuff? That's a great question. Uh, so I think the best choice that I personally made was marrying an SEO expert who's sitting over here. So our website SEO is handled by Dan. And so that's his bread and butter. He corporate handled SEO. And so all of our tips and tricks live inside his brain. Um, and so for us, it was a matter of marrying my digital marketing skills and social media in with the learning, the SEO learnings that I learned from him. Um, he's been really great about being active in communities where a lot of conversation about SEO is happening. 
So I know he's picked up tips and tricks from Facebook groups and colleagues and having those types of conversations. But uh, for actual website SEO proper, um, I would talk to an expert who is not me. <laughs> So what would you suggest to someone that is starting? Because you know it can be very overwhelming to um, receive all this information and not to know what to do. You know, what would be what would be your suggestion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do think social media can be really overwhelming, and I think it can be really hard as a business owner or someone who's trying to start their own business to figure out where to start. And I think my my first tip would be to not try to do it all at once, to just start with one thing and grow that. And when you feel a little bit more stable on that, grow to the next and grow to the next. So I think it really depends on what your business goals are. Um, me personally, you know, there, there have been other business ventures where Instagram was a really great opportunity for me to put my signal out there about the product and services that I was offering, especially in a specific location. Our content is uh, for a North American audience. So YouTube works really well for us. And it's not specific to one necessary destination. So for us, uh, we know that people are searching for different resorts. And so we want to be there where they're searching. So for us, YouTube was a really big um, op growth opportunity for us. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation afterwards and see if we can troubleshoot what uh, the business goals might be and maybe which social platforms to start with, because I do think it can be overwhelming to try to tackle them all at once. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Last round of applause for Michelle. <laughs> <laughs>